So I have my Android phone over here with SpaceMax running on the top window, where I've written some Python code which sends some data over a WebSocket to a Node.js application that I also have running on this phone. The browser in the bottom window shows the page that it serves. Now, if I go and run the Python script from SpaceMax, voila. All of this is running on board this phone. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set your Android phone so that you can do this kind of development as well. The first part of this puzzle is an app called Termux, a terminal emulator for Android, which I routinely use to SSH into my office computer as well as my cloud servers. I even wrote and tested a Python serialization library using Termux during a lazy weekend when I was away from my laptop. This library is being used in production software right now. Don't tell anyone. Now, the main Termux app is free, as is an optional set of seriously cool API functions that let you do everything from logging sensor data to sending text messages and more using just normal bash scripts. There's also a number of paid add-ons for theming, widgets that can run predefined commands or scripts in a terminal, a way to launch commands on boot, and even a widget where you can run the terminal as a floating window. How cool is that? I don't use these very often myself, except for once when I use the API to send a mass text. If you guys have any creative uses for these, leave that in a comment below. Installing Termux from the Play Store and running it gets you a welcome screen, as well as a few additional buttons on the bottom for escape, tab, control, alt, and arrow keys, basically keys that you won't see on most Android keyboards. Now, depending on what you're doing, this may be sufficient. It is for me most of the times. If you need more firepower, I recommend installing Hacker's Keyboard, which is a seriously cool app that you should have anyway. Or better yet, just get a small Bluetooth keyboard. I'll leave a link in the description for one. Now note that Termux isn't just a terminal emulator. It's taken on a life that's more like a light distribution of Linux. It has a package manager called PKG, which is a wrapper over apt, and there's a number of repositories, even including some that contain X11 apps. Yes, if you really want you can run GUI applications using Termux. No, I'm not gonna go over that. You can check out the Termux wiki to find the available packages and learn more about Termux. You can also use the PKG search command to find packages. The main things of interest to this video are Vim, Emacs, and Python. These are all in the main repositories for Termux and are a single simple command away from installation. SpaceMax installation is also just as straightforward here as it would be anywhere else, though you will need Git which is once again just one pkg install git away. Then if we run Emacs and go through the basic SpaceMax setup, presto, we now have a world-class text editor on your phone. Let's edit some org files because what else are you gonna do with Emacs, right? This is actually a pretty decent solution for accessing and editing your org files on the go. Now, same thing for Python, a simple pkg install Python and you get Python 3.8 with pip installed. And then using pip, you can install things like virtual and wrapper and get yourself ready for Python development that way. This, however, is where we hit our first big snag. Most pure Python packages like IPython will install just fine. But if you're trying to install something like NumPy, which is a C extension, you'll run into some issues since you will either need to build them from source, which is a pretty involved thing to do. And I'm sure that's doable, but it's going to take forever for you to build something like NumPy. A better solution for this case, in my opinion, is to grab the It's Pointless repository, as shown here in the Termux wiki. Then popular packages like NumPy and SciPy become available through PKG. Note that this means that you will need to allow the use of system packages in your virtual ends when you create them. And in some cases, you may need to also tell pip to not install these dependencies. It's a less than ideal situation, but given that this is on your phone, given these circumstances, I think it's okay. For my demonstration today, after NumPy, I also installed a package called 3Wiz, which is a package I wrote for 3D visualization in a browser. So with all of this set up, I can run SpaceMax, switch to the virtual env, and try importing the plot3d function from 3Wiz. Note that we get full autocomplete as well. Anything that you expect from SpaceMax normally is going to be present here, which I think is really, really awesome. Now let's turn our attention to Node.js. We can search for Node using the pkg command and then install the relevant package. NPM also gets installed with Node, which is nice. So I can just do NPM install and get all the dependencies for my package. And then NPM start gets the app going. It even automatically switches me to the browser and presto. My Node.js app is now being served from my phone with browser sync enabled and all the normal bells and whistles that we get with modern web development. Now with all of these pieces put together, I can split my phone's view and put the editor and browser side by side then write a simple bit of code in the editor for sending some data to the front end and run it straight from inside SpaceMax like I showed in the beginning. And there we have it. 
you have a polyglot development environment with a world-class text editor, all that power is literally in the palm of your hands. So what do you guys think of Termax? Can you think of situations where it may be useful to you for development specifically? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. If it was helpful to you, please leave a like and consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you're always the first one to know when I post new content. Bye!